How's it going, everybody? I've always liked how cube designs and cube mechanisms are never too complicated. It's always pretty basic and simple, but it always gets the job done, and it always is very... Okay, just kidding. Cubes are way too complicated. I hate it. Options are annoying. They make everything more complicated and confusing, even though they're supposed to make everything easier. It just annoys me so much, and cubing isn't helping either. Basically, every new 3x3 has so many customization options with the springs and the tension and the magnets and the plastic and the internals, and it's just like, ah! So, today, I think it would be a good idea to talk about cube customization, all the various forms it comes in, and how it works, and why is it so darn confusing? To understand cube customization, we need to take a look at some earlier 3x3s. For example, let's just take the Volk 3. The Volk 3, the original one, didn't have magnets. The one I'm holding does have magnets, but it didn't have ma any magnets, so there was no magnet adjustment, and the mechanism was just a basic screw and spring. Nothing fancy at all. You could, of course, tension the screw to make it tighter to improve quarter cutting and lessen the chance of pops. You can like tighten it or loosen it, basically basic screw things. And then also you could technically swap out the springs for different springs from another cube. But that does take a long time and you're not exactly sure what you're going to get when you do that. So as you can see, this is a cube with zero built-in functionalities in terms of customization. You could of course swap out the springs you could technically tighten it, but I wouldn't really call that customization. And I suppose you could also add extra magnets, but all those things are external things not provided to you by the cube. You have to get other springs from another cube, other magnets, and etc., etc., etc. So this is basically what it was before customization was introduced in any form. The next cube we need to take a look at is the GAN356 Air, the original all the way back from 2016. This cube technically had a customization system, although it wasn't really much, but we're going to look at it anyways. This cube was the first to have a GES system. A GES system has been re like reused with GAN, all sorts of GAN cubes, and changed and optimized and all these things. But the GAN era was the very first time it appeared, and really all it was was color-coded springs that work slightly differently from regular screw and spring mechanisms. Instead of like a regular screw and spring mechanism, it had like sort of a GS nut thing that was sort of a screw and a spring in one, and they were all color coded for different springs. And the GAN Air, like the bigger, the special editions, I think it was called like Master, had like more springs that you could customize it with and swap it out with, but you'd have to get like the better versions in order to have those otherwise you wouldn't be able to use the GES nuts. So this was basically just a glorified spring swap system but it was something and it was color coded and it allowed it for easily to be recognized between the different springs but that was really all it did. In 2018 came the Moyu Weilong DTS 3M and this was the first cube to have a built-in spring system. No swapping out. Essentially what this did was compress the springs. You would use a tool and it would sort of turn a gear and compress the springs. And this was actually a very, very good system. I don't really have many complaints about it. It had lots of settings and it was very simple and easy to use, unlike a lot of other spring systems in the modern day. And it's still being used by Moyu cubes and Guoguan cubes a couple times as well. Later in 2018, we saw the GAN X release, which was a very revolutionary cube, to be completely honest. It had the very first magnet adjustment system, which was huge at the time. The way it worked was that you had little magnet capsules and then you would stick one into the other, then it would pop the other one out. A very interesting system, but it's not really used anymore because another system sort of outmatched it, but we'll get to that in a bit. Anyways, this was a very simple system. It was pretty easy to tell which magnet strings it were because you had different colors. Although the ones that were no magnets in them, the blank capsules, those were the same colors as the strong capsules, which didn't really make any sense. Also, almost nobody really used the other strings. Almost everyone used the strong capsules, which a thing with customization systems is 
there's really no point to them if there's only one setting that really anyone uses because then there's really no point. This was kind of a problem with the earlier GS systems as well. Nobody really seemed to use the lower or the higher settings. Everyone either used the green or the yellow, which were the sort of medium settings for the GS. So when designing a customization system, you really want to hit that middle ground where a lot of people will use the different settings so there's actually value to what you're doing. This cube also introduced another system, this time in the screw. It was called the numerical IPG. GAN had been using GES nuts for a while now, but this time they took it a step further and also allowed you to customize the screw with just a little push of your finger. You didn't need to use a screwdriver or anything. There were a couple settings you could use. Now this seemed great at first, but then you realized you could basically only use those four settings that they provided to you. I think it was four, maybe it was more than that, I don't know. But you could only use those settings that were provided to you, and then if you wanted to have like an actual full control of the tension, you would have to get a different version, which I'm glad GAN did make a different version because that would have been kind of stupid if they didn't. They made the IPG V5 version, which is basically like the other GAN cube before that you could just tighten it with a screwdriver, which was nice. So while the GAN X system was very revolutionary as it introduced magnet adjustment and even screw adjustment, it still had a long way to go because you still had to swap things out of the cube and put other things into the cube, which obviously took a lot of time and was a bit confusing as well. But the Uatio EDM solved the magnet problem and allowed you to adjust it just by moving your finger across the piece. This was very, very revolutionary, and GAN actually used a very, very similar design, almost to the point of copying, later that year when they made the GAN XS, the sequel to the GAN X. It's kind of weird that I just called it a sequel. It sounds like it's like a movie or something. Anyways, the UHO EDM system was very nice because it was super easy to use. However, the UHO EDM itself wasn't a very good cue. Wogwan sort of has a thing where they like to do really weird experimental stuff, but kind of disregard the actual piece design and not really care if it's actually a good cube or not. They just want to try out these weird setting things. Also, it was also another case of really only one setting was really used by most people, I feel like. Most people only use the strong setting, which is not really a good thing for customizing because it's like, what was the point of it then? Anyways, later in 2019, the GAN XS came along and sort of kind of copied the Uatio EDM's design, but put it in a much better cube. And I think also the adjustment was a little more justified considering that most settings were sort of both usable. After that, we saw the release of the MGC Elite, which had another interesting magnet system where you would use a actual screwdriver to sort of turn the magnet itself, which is pretty interesting. And we also saw the Volk Elite, which had a system that was kind of more reminiscent of the, the GAN X system, but it actually used center to edge magnets, which is something that we haven't really seen anymore since then. I think the MGC Repulsion had it, but that was a more of an experiment. And what the, that would do is that there would be magnets that attract from the edge to the center, which is normally to the edge to the corner, which was very interesting that they changed that up. And they would allow you to change the center magnet strength with different center caps. Pretty smart. But it was kind of slower to do, and also a lot of people didn't really want any magnets in the center and the edge, so they would just use the setting that didn't have any in it. So yeah, the Volk Elite was weird. Anyways, that brings us to the net last year and a half or so, where the problem has really started to arise with customized cubes. Modern flagship cubes and even non-flagship cubes have just been putting spring settings on top of screw settings on top of magnet settings and all these other things and it's just like way too confusing for people. I've seen so many people online like asking other people, how do you even adjust this? What does this even do? What's a good setting? Blah, 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 which is never a good thing. You want your systems to be intuitive if you, if you want people to make it easier for people to customize their cubes. Like, there's so many cubes that just have way too many settings now. They're going for more settings over good settings and easy to understand settings. I mean, the X-Man Tornado V2 was all bragging about how it had like 125 different settings. In all seriousness, I really don't think that those are actually that different from each other like probably most of those 125 settings are very very similar it's like if i were to cut off one hair on my head and call it a new hairstyle 
it's so different. But anyways, yeah, that's my main problem with the recent customization systems. They're just way too confusing and complicated and people have to like look up or ask other people online, how the heck do you do this? What does this even do the cube in the first place? What even is a good setting to use, etc., etc. So it's just, they're not really doing customization right. And I think we should go back to maybe more like the days where we only had a couple customization settings, but they were actually useful and helpful. Another thing I kind of don't like is that it's making the cube designers kind of forget about the actual design of the pieces because, oh, there's so many settings, so we can just have whatever terrible cube, but because there's a bunch of settings, we can make it good. So it's like, that's kind of annoying. Instead of actually putting effort into the piece design, like something like the Volk 3, they're just making any old cube, but then slapping a bunch of settings onto it and saying it's a flagship, which is just kind of annoying. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of rant mode because if I do get any more into rant mode, I'm never gonna end this video. So anyways, that's basically an overview of the history of cube customization. I don't see the age of endless options and cubes ever ending anytime soon, but we'll just have to deal with it and hopefully there'll be more clear and obvious and intuitive designs later in the future. Hopefully, I'm not getting my hopes up too much. Anyways, that's the gonna end the video for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making it and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you later.